Our next guest says the big summer commodities focus is oil and natural gas. He's bullish on oil, bearish on natural gas for the season. Joining us now is Ed Morse, City Group Global Head uh, of Commodities. It's good to, good to see you this morning, uh, Ed. Uh, welcome. And um, how about that? We led the show yesterday, as I said, this, this we have never done before, with wheat, with wheat prices. We're a business network, but we don't do as much on commodities maybe as in the past on the good old 70s, but uh, when we weren't around. But um, it, they're back in vogue. You, you picked the right job. Well, they're back in vogue, but we'll see how long that lasts. I mean, we did expect that uh, the Russians were going to stall on the renewal of the grain deal. Uh, they're looking for getting more access to their cash. They're looking for some way to uh, get paid through the SWIFT system. Um, and, you know, those negotiations are ongoing. And uh, they can't really afford the reputational risk or the market risk that they have with their customers since they are feeding through the Black Sea, um, developing countries largely in North Africa, uh, including Egypt. So uh, we think this is going to be a, a very short-term little battle uh, that the Russians are having in the agreement with the Ukraine. The, uh, I guess we do talk, obviously, if... If you can, we talk about oil every day. We put up that board, and, and whenever we talk about the stock futures, we always mention oil. So that commodity we do watch. Why are you bullish on oil, but not uh, not as friendly towards natural gas? Yes, yeah, so well, we know that you know temperatures are reaching record levels in Europe and parts of the United States. Uh, it's a very hot summer, and you'd think that gas demand would be way up. But if you look at the European numbers. Gas demands is lower than it was last year, lower than the year before, even though prices have come down, I don't know, they're ranging between one and eight, one eighth and one tenth of where they were, but the demand really isn't there. Uh, and the, the supply seems adequate, including inventories, which are, are relatively high for this time of year and could reach limits of capacity in the U.S. and in Europe by the time we get to November. But the, the oil p picture is quite different. Uh, inventories are very low. Uh, they're at the low end of the five-year range, uh, both for crude oil uh, and, more importantly, for uh, for gasoline. Um, and we are seeing a, a pickup in demand that uh, uh, that has been surprising. Uh, the pickup is not uh, as great as a normal summer would be, but in the U.S., we've had provisions upward in demand. People are driving more. The economy is going well, um, uh, and. Uh, and with the limited amount of inventories, given the fact that we have hurricane season uh, uh, really approaching, we had more named storms than ever in the month of June in the Atlantic Basin. So uh, the risk seems to be on the upside for us, even though uh, we're two thirds of the way, not quite half, more than halfway through July, almost two thirds through it. And we haven't hit the $80 mark yet, but uh, uh, we think the demand is there to pull it up and the accidents that could happen are on the bullish side rather than the bearish side. Where are we in, in terms of all-time high uh, production in the United States? So we, we, we'll get there when, this year or next? Well, we've had two months for final data, so-called final data already, showing that total liquids production out of the U.S. has twice reached its former record, which was last November and before that last September. Uh, so we're seeing still growth on the crude oil side, uh, we're seeing growth in natural gas liquids. We're seeing growth in biofuels. Uh, and that number is now in the last, uh, quote, quote, final numbers that we have uh, gotten in June for the month of April. We're at 21.3 million barrels a day, uh, a liquids number that uh, has never been seen before. Um, oil production, uh, we think, is going to be hitting the 13 million mark, even though productivity is slowing down, uh, even though drilling is, uh, is slowing down. But there's enough momentum going on in that market to see continued growth through the end of the year. Well, if we're at 105 uh, barrels a day that we're going to need in, I don't know, five, 10 years, are we going to are we going to have the supply, or is the price naturally going to just? Are you looking at a permanent $200 price of oil in in two or three years, Ed? Hardly, because we're seeing demand growth slowing down dramatically, and therefore the amount of supply needed. Is, uh, is significantly less than the amount of, uh, of supply that we've needed in the past. So you don't and believe if, the OPEC secretary we, said 105? He said 4 million per day more in a couple And when years. was the last time he was right on the forecast? Oh, of, he, uh, he's, he, so he's talking his uh, book, maybe. 
I think I think unfortunately the OPEC numbers have become political numbers, and yeah. we could, we just have to look at those. But well, uh, I don't know what we're going to replace it with. Uh, if, if it's still 82 percent fossil fuels for the world's energy needs, what what are we going to use? You better hope the wind keeps blowing. No, no, it's if the fossil fuels are going to be there in the market, we think it's going to be volatile because we have demand really yeah. slowing right. down and we have oil supply that's going to be uh, growing in fits and starts uh, and mostly out of out of the OPEC countries for sure. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the, the major ones uh, are looking to monetize their oil. Look at the UAE, the most articulate of all of them on this. You know, let's get this monetized before it becomes a stranded asset. Right. Uh, and let's get growth going in other areas. The Saudis are on Golf. Uh, you know, the same, right. uh, right. same path, but they, they, they have, they're further behind. Their, their economies are not as diversified as the economy of the UAE.